We've made it to April, my friends. Thanks for hanging with me. Let's look at a couple things in April. Don't give up on things just because Jupiter and Venus is maybe starting on the back side of where they were, but still being a big thing to see. Each thing has symbolism up there. History, stories, myth, truth. This is just a little article, and we're talking about Mars in the article, and about an old-time astronomer, which would be Mr. Lowell. And all the preoccupation with Mars, because Mars is viewable now. It's not as spectacular when you look at it as Venus and Jupiter, maybe. But it's up there, and it's coming into, I can see it. All I got to do is turn around and look the other way and not quite straight over my head when I am looking, but later on it is. <clears throat> but it's it's reddish. You know, I can see it with naked eye. Much smaller uh, in view. Now, Venus will be floating near the Pleiades star cluster, the Seven Sisters, in the last few days of April. And the king of the planets, Jupiter, will become closer to the western horizon. Saturn, I can see that too with naked eye, but it's it's not big like Venus and Jupiter is. Uh, southeastern sky, a few hours after sunset. And it'll be even better looking in May. And then you're going to have a uh, meteor shower coming. The 21st, maybe into the 22nd. Oh, the moon apparently will not interfere with that. Crescent moon below and left of Venus on the 24th. So, since we're talking about planets and we know they have meaning. We know their symbols have meaning, and old-time stories are not just old-time stories. Well, there's a little something here about symbolism in our Statue of Liberty. There have been shows, there have been writings, there's been uh, hypotheses of scenarios of the building and what it meant. Let's see what it meant. From a biblical perspective. And when Mike speaks, it's always from a biblical perspective. That's what I what I like about these DVDs. Well, God has always helped me uh, throughout my life just study the scriptures and stay in the scriptures. And as we mentioned last time, I've always had this inquisitive mind. I look at something and I don't always accept the answer that I'm given. And I want to know what's going on. I want to know. I, I sort of uh, have turned in since I studied the Da Vinci Code. And, and uh, we, we were talking yesterday uh, about uh, Brother J.R. Church, the book that he wrote called Guardians of the Grail. I remember reading that when it first came out. It really fascinated me. But it, I just kind of stuck it in a file of, of my mind. And, and then when I read the Da Vinci Code, I started seeing and started remembering things that J.R. had put in Guardians of the Grail. And I'm going, well, it makes more sense now. And he did a fantastic work. But that in itself got me interested in the language of symbolism. And so I've studied symbols. I've studied uh, things that are on supposedly Christian books and Christian material uh, as symbols that I've decided, according to the scriptures, are, are not right. But symbols are always meant to conceal something. And my mind says, well, that's not good enough. If I see two people talking, I want to know what they're talking about. I want to know what secrets they're sharing. And so I believe that the Bible, and of course the Bible tells us that God is the revealer of deep and secret things. 
um, in the uh, in the uh, Daniel chapter two, when Daniel was being asked to not only discern the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had, but actually tell him what the dream was. None of the astrologers and soothsayers that Nebuchadnezzar had could tell what that dream was because it was hidden from them. And here Daniel shows up and says, King, I can tell you both what the dream was and what it means, and it's going to come from God. I'm not anybody special, but God is the one who reveals Heals the deep and secret things. And even the very last book of our Bible is the book of Revelation. It's going to, the whole New Testament reveals what was once kept hidden in the Old Testament. And so God wants to reveal things to us that, that uh, you people talk about the Illuminati and the Council on Foreign Relations, the Bilderbergs, the secret societies who they don't, don't like to be called secret societies anymore. They like to be referred to as a society with secrets. And that sounds very dignified. Yeah. But I want to know what that secret is. Absolutely. Now, right on the cover of this DVD, it says American Goddess. And then the subtitle, Lucifer's Torch. Uh, here she's holding up this fiery torch with this giant flame that's going up into the heavens and, and reaching out to who knows where. Well, we're going to find out where. Uh, in just a moment. But Mike, most Americans have a fond attachment for the Statue of Liberty. Uh, we have all been conditioned to believe that she is a welcomer uh, of the poor, the oppressed, and so forth. And when they see Liberty's torch, the hope springs in their heart. You know, she's a positive image. Uh, I want you to just go right into who she is, what, what her background is. She's got a long, long history behind her, hasn't she? If I, if I was a tour guide, uh, taking people to to Ellis Island to the Statue yeah. of Liberty, and they were to ask me, uh, "What is this thing? What does it represent?" I mean, obviously, it's symbolic of something. And here's something to understand about the language of symbols. Um, in fact, uh, Albert Pike in Morals and Dogma talked about this, and he said, "We as Freemasons, we use symbols. There is always an exoteric meaning, which, which means this." This is the one we tell everybody. There is an esoteric meaning, which means it's hidden, it's secret, and we don't tell anybody. So someone going through the Blue Lodge, the first three degrees of Freemasonry, they're told, well, the rope means this, and the sleeves rolled up means this, and the, all of this furniture in the lodge means this. But Albert Pike explains, basically, we didn't tell them the whole truth. We hid back something that we can't really reveal to them until a certain time. And so here the, the Statue of Liberty basically is this gigantic symbol. And it, as you mentioned, most of our forefathers came into this country by way of New York City. Those who were fleeing uh, Europe and things like that, they were coming into New York City. They see, the first thing they see is the Statue of Liberty, and they think that is the symbol of America. And we like to think of America as this great Christian nation and truly for a while America was sending the gospel literally to the four corners of the earth when the when our founders came over here from Europe they wanted to settle a new Jerusalem they wanted a, a nation that was built upon the the fundamental principles of the scriptures so they come bearing the word of God first it was the Geneva Bible then the King James Bible they come bearing the word Word of God in their hands, and that, that's what they had envisioned. But you know as well as I do, Jude talks about certain men crept in unaware. So be, be the, between the time of the 1600s and the 1700s, when we're going to revolt against England and form this nation, we already are starting to see the certain men creeping in. And instead of a nation that's built upon the principles of God, now we're starting to see things, and it's really coming to light now. Now we're starting to see things built upon a different spirit. And Paul warned about another spirit or another Jesus. And so we have another spirit that seems to be dominating over the United States of America. And rather than being God the Father spirit, there is another spirit that, that the scriptures talk about. Revelation chapter 17, her name is Mystery, Babylon the Great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Now, when I, if I were to just come out and say the Statue of Liberty is a statue of Mystery Babylon, the great mother of harlots, 
you may not quite get that. But let's look at since in fact, if I if I may just kind of interrupt mm -hmm. for a second, you might even rebel against that. You might oh wait a minute, you're impugning the reputation of our beloved. The Statue of Liberty. Exactly. Uh, I think most people might take that kind of a, of a turn. Well, it's and and that is understandable because that spirit represents a harlot, rebellious spirit, and and those who follow her defend her deeply. You remember in the Book of Acts when Paul was standing up against. Yeah. The, the coppersmiths and the idol makers and everything like that, and they were yeah. see, they're going to lose their income. Okay, if Christianity spreads, yeah. they're going to lose their income. And by the way, they were making little statues of Diana. That's exactly right. They were making statues of Diana, yeah. and it's interesting that they that that they said, "Whom the whole world worshipeth." Well, that's essentially true because you go all the way back. You, you look at it scripturally. We, we have we have. Diana, she's mentioned in the book of Acts. You go back to the Old Testament, she's called Ashtaroth. Uh, uh, in Egypt, she was called Isis, uh, Asherah, Ishtar. Uh, the name Esther, Queen Esther, was named after this goddess spirit, the fertility goddess, Venus, Xingmu in China. And she has all of these names all over the world. The Mayans and the Incans, they all had a fertility goddess that was worshipped, of course, in a in a fertility fashion. A lot, a lot of terrible things happen as a result of that. Right. But that's who that spirit represents, and she never she always represents herself in statues and I or idols. It's, it's interesting. I have to react to what you said about fertility goddess because we're talking about the uh, regenerative principle here. Exactly. The idea of, uh, of birth mm -hmm. and, and the idea of uh, the, the human genome, the idea of, uh, uh, of uh, fertility in general. All of those goddesses, being goddesses of fertility, would allude to the whole idea of reproduction, which then becomes a sort of a pagan it uh, does. Ritual. Think about what's on the back of the one dollar bill. Okay, we have the all-seeing eye, which is not God's eye. Okay, it's the eye of illumination. That's what the torch that Lady Liberty holds in her hand. She holds this torch up high, and it's the torch of uh, Luciferianism, more the Luciferian doctrine. Uh, even. There was a show on the History Channel called Decoded, and they were looking into this from a purely secular point of view, and that's what came out was was that this torch that she held in her hand represents the Luciferian idea. Lucifer, of course, means light bearer. No, and I've uh, oh, excuse me, I've watched the video, uh, so I'm way ahead of you. <laughs> you got to watch this video, but uh, I have to interrupt and say that you show that that she actually has some symbols on her outer garment. Strange little little symbols that are, uh, are displayed there. Yeah, a and and those symbols have to do with the generative principle, and they're esoteric symbols. What in the world are, the, are those doing there? Well, think of I was mentioning the the one dollar bill at the bottom. It says Novus Ordo Seclorum, which means yeah. New World Order, and so that automatically piques anybody who studied conspiracy theories or anything like that. that we know that a New World Order is coming in. Hitler. Wanted he called his he called his kingdom a new order. He wanted that. That was it was sort of like a a, a precursor to what we're seeing in the last days. And it's Satan's mockery of number one the thousand year reign of Christ, which I wholeheartedly believe, wholeheartedly believe in. And then number two the new heaven and the new earth. And so Satan is wanting to have a new world. But the caption above that says I know it coeptus, which literally means he favors the birth. And so you ha you're going to have a birth of something to bring in the New World Order. So hence we have the feminine goddess who is always worshipped with fertility practices. This is why God told the Israelites, when you go into Canaan land and you see their images and you start picking up on the religion, don't do it. But all of a sudden now, all throughout Israel, they had a they had a continuing problem with this because there was there was the groves built to Asheroth and there was the images of Baal, and they all had to do with fertility practices. So in these high places, you had these you had these temple prostitutes. You had this worship going on that involved for ritual fornication. 
And that in itself was to, supposed to bring in this God effect. That's what Dan Brown was talking about in the Da Vinci Code. Now, as you speak, I'm thinking, I'm sort of applying what you're saying to the average American mind. And the average American mind is not equipped to, to, to grasp this and incorporate it into daily reality. Because we all think of, oh, the goddess, that's years ago, that's, that's millennia ago. Mm -hmm. People have quit worshiping goddesses a long time ago. Why, why does this have anything to do with me? And maybe you could answer that, that question. Ecclesiastes, the answers are always in the Bible. Ecclesiastes, Sol, you, you got to read this. Uh, Solomon, who was given so much wisdom, who incidentally fell into this thing of fertility practices yes, with his did. 700 wives who are in a concubines. I mean, he fell into that. But he wrote in Ecclesiastes, he said, uh, that which was, that which shall be, there is no new thing under the sun. God even says he declares the end from the beginning. As it was in the days of Noah, oh. so shall it be. And so here we have this, all these things, this idea that if we study, especially according to the scripture, and I think that we can, you know, we can reasonably look at other ancient texts, uh, like the book of Jasher, which is mentioned in the scriptures and, and, and other things. We study especially the scriptures to get an idea of what happened in the past and how there was idol worship and worshiping statues and these, these images and icons that were around there and what they represented then. When we see what they represented then, then we can jump ahead to now we're living, in, I believe, in the last days, and we're going to see the very, very same things happening, probably on a much grander scale, but they're going to be according to what has already been written in the scriptures. Well, let me uh, offer you, you this video. This is going to be eye-opening, uh, I guarantee you. American Goddess Lucifer's Torch. And we're going to offer it with three other videos by Mike Hoggard, UFO Chariots of the Beast. We've talked about that one on another broadcast. <clears throat> Bilderberg, The True Story. All of these videos are viewed through the lens of Scripture. In other words, uh, Mike always goes back to scripture for explanations of what he's talking about and it is super clear in the way that he presents these. The Cult of 33, uh, Mike has a gift for looking at numbers in scripture and making sense of them. And that's all I'm going to tell you for now. <laughs> you need to know about the Cult of 33. Uh, these, by the way, are 1995 each. We're going to offer them as a package, the Mike Hoggard package. Uh, nineteen ninety-five each, four of them. $80 right there. How, how would you like, with that, a free subscription uh, worth thirty-four ninety-five to Prophecy in the News? 48 pages, prophetically oriented, biblical articles, month after month. The magazine, the four videos, would be about $115 value, years for $79.95, plus shipping and handling. Call 1-800-475-1111. That's the uh, uh, number you see on your screen right now. <clears throat> and it, it, somebody will be there to answer it all the time, I guarantee you. And we will speed you this Mike Hoggard package. That's what, what you ask for when you call that number, the Mike Hoggard package. And I guarantee you, and I mean I really do guarantee you, that... These four videos will keep you captivated. You're going to be sharing these ideas with your friends in the months to come, and they contain very vital information. Mike, let's continue our conversation about the American goddess. She's a goddess who goes way, way back. She does. Um, the, the, the man that built her, uh, Bartholdi, was a, he was a French Freemason. He was actually commissioned as a Freemason to build this image. this What we have is a statue. We have a statue of a goddess, and of that there's no doubt. The torch representing the illumination and so on. Remember that Lucifer appears as an angel of light. Okay, It's a false light. It's not real. The crown on her head, this, then there's seven, seven rays coming out of her head. And when you study, when you study like uh, the New Age writings, when you study Blavatsky and, and things, even Crowley, uh, which I don't recommend. You study these, these things and you understand what these seven rays represent, seven initiations, seven, seven Mithraic rites where the God who had died, who identified with the beast of Revelation 13 and Revelation 17, and he was and is not and yet shall it shall be. That's who the beast is. The Mithraic rites 
had this idea that this God who was slain was going to be resurrected by seven rituals. A uh, Masonic ladder has seven rungs on it. You know, you climb the ladder and so on. And that's what these seven rays coming out of her head represent. And it's interesting is that at the top of the Statue of Liberty, at her crown, literally her forehead, where back in the base of our brain is a thing called the pineal gland. That is at one of the core teachings of the New Age movement. It is the, the awakening of the pineal gland, and they say that it awakes you. Actually, when the pineal gland is activated, you fall asleep. And so it's exactly <laughs> opposite of, uh, you know, of what they say it is. But right around the area of the forehead or the crown, there are these windows, and people are supposed to climb up these, this ladder and come to this. this uh, the forehead always represents illumination. In yoga or in the Eastern mystic rites, they have this idea called kundalini, and kundalini says is that at the base of your spine, entrapped and entombed, is a beast, a serpent, and he's coiled up. Well, I know who the serpent is, okay? Sure. You mentioned that cult of 33. Yeah. Kundalini says that you have 33 bones in your spinal column, okay? Kundalini says is that um, if you go into these ritualistic practices, that beast is going to rise up and go up the 33 bones of your spinal column and touch and activate your pineal gland and you'll be awake. And so in that process of going up the 33 bones, you have seven what they call chakra points. And when it reaches that seventh chakra, then you have this illumination of the world and now you're enlightened and you're this ascended master and all this stuff. It's basically a cult demonology is what it is. Now, this is very complex. It becomes very simple when you mm -hmm. view the video because you have time to develop these ideas. But you're saying when a tourist goes inside the Statue of Liberty, they are practicing a ritual. They're doing what you would do in these old temples. You would you have to go up a set of steps, which represents layers or levels of initiation to get to the holy of holies or whatever it is. And that's what that's how that was designed because Bartholdi was a Freemason. He had a secret knowledge, he had a secret concept, and he built that. And so it's interesting that the the stairway or the way to get to the top of the Statue of Liberty is not on the outside. It, it's shrouded. And everything that's in the societies with secrets or it's in the occult or in, in the New Age movement or whatever is always shrouded. And so here the Statue of Liberty wears this long robe. Okay? And that is to shroud and conceal an inner secret. And I'll just take a few minutes and explain exactly what that secret is. And once you understand this, you can understand the secret of the secret societies and, the, and everything that's going on. And okay. we get it right out of the scriptures. Okay. God wrote a book. And it's, this is fascinates me. God wrote a book. It's called the Bible. God wrote another book. David talked about it in Psalm 139. He said, in thy book, all my members were written which in continuance was fashioned when as yet there was none of them. David was describing, uh, 3,000 years ago, David was, was describing the DNA code Amen. that is in every cell in our body because when we're conceived, we're just <clears throat> this little circle right. in our mother's womb and we have no arms and legs. But the book that is in our DNA has already encoded for arms, legs, hair, eyes and everything like that and so it was it's continuance and fashion and it's codes for all of our members and it's written exactly like a book including periods at the end of gene sequences that they called stop dna that's how the scientists know that one gene ends and another gene starts is that there's a code called stop dna okay so it's written exactly like a book now there are rules Concerning the book that God wrote, you cannot add to, you cannot take away from. And here we're hearing on the news all the time, prophecy. Because we're hearing yeah. the genetic scientists saying, now we can take this out of man's DNA and we can put this in. It's going to cure all of man's diseases. Okay, well, those, those DNA packets are in called, what's called chromosomes. And there's 46 of those chromosomes. In the temple that Solomon built, he had two pillars. Jacob and Boaz. Those two pillars happen to be the central theme of the Society with Secrets. 
this pillar was 23 cubits tall, this pillar was 23 cubits tall, that makes 46, that's where the chromosomes are. The boards of the wilderness tabernacle, there were 20 down the south side, 20 down the north side, and six across the back, that's 46, and that's to mark our 46 chromosomes where our DNA is stored. Even in the time of Christ, when, Jesus, when they had Jesus looking at the temple, remember what Paul said, mm -hmm. he said it in 1 Corinthians, which just happens to be the 46th book linearly in the scriptures, in the Bible. He said, what know you not that your body is the temple? And so Jesus said to them, destroy this temple and in three days I'll rebuild it. And they said, and I love this, they said 40 and 6 years was this temple in building, but they didn't know he was referring to the temple of his body. Right. Okay, and so I see this, and so now, here, get this, DNA is like a ladder. Masonry uses a ladder that ascends from earth into heaven. Um, DNA is a ladder, but it's in a spiral form, okay? In the Statue of Liberty, there are two spiral staircases. Uh-oh, you're not going to tell me, are you? That's exactly what I, and by, by the way, the <laughs> French built the Statue of Liberty based upon French standards. The French had already adopted the metric system. They were no longer using English feet and English inches. They were using the metric system. So Bartoli built the Statue of Liberty to be exactly 46 meters high. And so here wow. in the Statue of Liberty, you have two winding staircases that will take a person from a low base level up to the point of illumination at the top of the crown or the chakra, the seventh chakra. I'm sitting here having a thought. Okay. There's a true temple, the Lord Jesus Christ, and there's a false temple. And the temple of the temple of the Antichrist in the last days. Wow. That's what that Statue of Liberty represents. Now, let me throw something else in here because here's something that I know that's not on the video. Okay. Um, the idea of adding to man's DNA. Think of what Lucifer wanted to do with yeah. Eve in the Garden of Eden. By the way, it just so happens. It's just, just a point of fact. People can make whatever conclusion they want to. In the King James Bible, according to Genesis chapter 3, if you count every word that the serpent spoke to Eve in Genesis chapter 3, you'll end up with exactly 46 words. Okay? The corruption of the DNA book that God wrote in Adam when he created him. Adam was perfect in every way. Now we have corruption here given and seeded over by Satan's words. So think about that corruption. And the idea of Freemasonry is, is that man is incomplete. Freemasonry talks about building a new temple, but it's the temple of man. Mm. And so they know that something has to be added to that temple to make man into a god. And so hence, instead of two strands of DNA, like the two sections of our Bible, Old and New Testament, that are joined together by the four Gospels, now we have the two strands of DNA, and something, a third strand, needs to be added to that to make man a god. So right now, according to what I've heard, they're in the process of refitting the Statue of Liberty and adding to the two spiral staircases that are already in there, adding a third spiral staircase that will take the people up to the crown of elimination in that. That's just the, the brief synopsis of what's going a on. A brief synopsis. And, and you read in the Bible about Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and you say, where did she come from? I guarantee you, you will know <laughs> where she came from if you watch this video by Mike Hoggart. And he has time in these videos, about an hour and a half each, maybe a little less, maybe an hour and 20. I haven't timed them, but you've got, in these four videos I'm holding, about six hours of Mike Hoggard. And believe me, you need six hours, because he, he goes into highly developmental patterns to show you what he has discovered. And uh, I wouldn't recommend that if I hadn't watched them myself and found a lot of meat there. And the, the beautiful thing about it, it's biblically based. He always goes back to scripture. Always goes back to scripture. Uh, the American goddess, Lucifer's torch, uh, we're offering this to you in a package which we're calling the Mike Hoggard package, uh, along with UFOs, Chariots of the Beast, Bilderberg, the true story, and the cult of 33. And if you think you know Mike as a counter of numbers, 
you don't know anything until you see. Uh, he mentioned 33 bones in the human spine a minute ago. That'll give you a little clue as to what this is all about. Uh, these four videos, <clears throat> and uh, by the way, uh, we're making them uh, available to you in a package along with a year's free subscription to Prophecy in the News, are year, yours for $79.95 plus shipping and handling. That would be about $115 value. So not only are you getting a great value, you're getting a free subscription to Prophecy in the News. As for the Mike Hoggard package, when you call 1-800-475-1111, and uh, they will ship this to you very quickly, and you'll be able to sit down and get the real Mike Hoggard in depth and detail. Uh, Mike, you know, that's the problem. Well, mention the old Statue of Liberty in Diana. So what we get problem with you Oop, excuse me. What we get we can get into some stuff about Diana the Princess and all the weird things surrounding her death. And the column, the pillar she ran into, the history of the site. There are things to it, it appears, when you sit down and think long and hard about it. Or as we're going with Mr. Assad, we've been told they have agreed to the peace plan offered by Kofi Bosher has agreed to start implementing it, but Mr. Anon has said there's been no progress yet in, in the killing. <clears throat> now Syria agreed to implementing it by the 10th according to this. And a full secession of hostilities within 48 hours. And then you go through all the rest of the yik yak and everything through it. And then the bottom line is if we get to the bottom line, uh, Syria says uh, they have to stop. The rebel movement has to end completely or they ain't complying pretty well. And then France, there's their interjection in Russia and China and what they're all saying about things. Bottom line, we got a paper deal, but we got no real deal in actions. I haven't heard about any big fightings and killings today. I'm going to look some more. But I don't think this is it. I would be surprised because he wants the rebels to lay down. And the rebels rebelled so they could win. So I'm not sure the rebels actually want peace. And what did they say? What did King Obama say? It's not a matter of if he goes, it's a matter of when he goes. So I cannot believe Bashar Assad will agree to abandon the ship. See? <clears throat> Talking about that again in our Skywatch. Venus and the Pleiades will meet for a conjunction. And this is Norway. A little bit of the auroras. Now I did not see this here, the sprite. So I was a little surprised to find this out. The first ones of summer are appearing. And this is photographed on the 30th from the observatory in New Mexico. 
And for those of those that don't know what a sprite is, during an electrical discharge it comes out of the top of the thunder clouds, opposite the ordinary lightning clouds, which plunge toward the earth, and they can be high as 90 kilometers above the ground. And that can that puts them in the space weather category as they overlap the zone of auroras, meteors, and knock the loose of the cloud. But they're associated with lightning. Seen in summer usually. Reported in Texas and New Mexico. Hmm. And this this pi actual picture it says it's two minutes and twenty six seconds after midnight on the thirtieth of March. A powerful bolt of lightning in Woodward. Woodward, Oklahoma. Now that would be oh, about 75 miles or something like that from me. So maybe I couldn't have seen it, but maybe I could have. It might have needed to be a little higher from my vantage point. I'm not sure yet. But I've never seen one before. A sprite. <clears throat> So that's something else you can look for sometimes in lightning and thunder clouds. But that's a nice picture too. And I don't get the green here. You know, I'm too far down, I guess, south. So when I do have some some auroras from the CMEs and stuff, I always get the pinkish purplish reddish kind I haven't seen I think I had some yellowish one time but not not green so our earthquake situation I've looked it over we haven't had anything uh, big for a little while now there is some activity in Mexico I believe they had a 6.0 and some smaller ones that followed. To my knowledge, no red. Mexico had the only red of 6.0. So everyone else is less than 6 and uh, it appears to be stable mid to low mid. Typical regions stretching from Australia. I'm sorry that you got something a while back. Uh, Jay, I hope it didn't scare you too bad. Maybe you didn't feel it to be too scared. Um, all through Indonesia, all the way up the line in Japan, circling back to us. <clears throat> That's a typical number one in my book. Well, thanks for all your uh, well wishes and prayers. Um, my brother went through his surgery, it hasn't been easy, and uh, I got a call here just a little bit ago, and he's having a little problem, so we'll see what, what transpires from it. So this has been quite long-winded, but I've been away for a while, so it was my intention to make it a little long and fill it with as much stuff as I could. But this is something here about the Statue of Liberty. And I hope none of you and any of your friends that you may share this with or if you're a new viewer and non-subscriber, uh, you have to think about what you're looking at and you can't go just with one thing because there's many things that people will say what it is. We always were taught it was good and liberty and all that other great American stuff. And we were indoctrinated into it throughout our whole life. And if you don't doubt it, you're not going to look beyond it. But if you look beyond it, you have to keep going back till you find the real first base of knowledge. And there you get into discussion about which book is the base. And in my book, the Holy Bible is the base. 
I didn't mean not to offend anyone else of any any religion because I don't want to start an argument or one right from wrong but in all my reading and thinking that's the only one that I've never been able to pick at actually and uh, concrete 100 percent anything not being true conjecture and ideas and stuff like that they sound good they look good they smell good maybe even they taste good but they can't be proven there's a lot of stuff in the Bible they say that can't be proven but that's why they say that because there's so much in the Bible that can be proven well, what are you going to do pick on the stuff that can be proven no you're going to go for the stuff that you know, maybe they haven't found the archaeological sites or items to date back and prove that time period or the events yet. And whatnot. To delve into the supernatural. So the Lord be with you and bless all of you. Carry you every day. He's been carrying me for a long time, a lot more than he has carried in quite some time. So, I will speak to each and every one of you as soon as possible. Uh, the smoother things go, the easier it'll be to get back into the swing of things with you. Videos and whatnot. Uh, I would like to participate in a, a group thing that I've been asked to, but this um, illness situation with my brother and whatnot, uh, at this current time, I, I don't have the time to devote to it. <clears throat> as my situation improves and I find out uh, and, and my mind is more at ease with what's going on here then I would be whole to devote my time to uh, getting in this and seeing what we can do to help people about everything that is going on because you got so much of it you get in a full front assault wham bam thank you ma'am from every angle below you above you around you it is just a full bombardment from supernatural and man things and that would be a part of our group discussion I believe all the different angles of everything so I'm going to let it go now and I'll see you guys soon, eh? Watch that sky.